Welcome back to Mobility Insider. I'm Morten Hannesbo. This is part two in my series about the Porsche Taycan. I've now had the car for about two and a half months and I can share with you my experience using it as my daily driver. I'll be talking about four things in this video. First of all, I'll talk about consumption and charging. I will also take you on a drive and give you my view on the interior and the concept of the vehicle. I'll talk about the Porsche Connect app and finally, we'll talk a little bit about a possible recall in connection with the traction battery of the Taycan. So far, based on the last 824 kilometers, I've had an average consumption of 22.5 kilowatt hours, it says now, per 100 kilometers. Um, is that good? I think it's okay, uh, considering the fact that this is a heavy car. Uh, it's got really wide tires, so that doesn't help. With the power the car has, uh, that's a reasonable consumption. Obviously, there will be cars uh, out there having a better consumption, but if I compare it to the uh, recent BMW i5, similar horsepower, similar size battery, and it has the uh, same consumption. So I think that is actually okay. And for the way I use the car, I take it to work, reasonable short uh, distance. For me, it works perfectly all right with that um, capacity of the battery, 83.4 kilowatt hours, and the range the car has, uh, it will give you 385 kilometers approximately. That's a pass uh, for me for the, for the Taycan. In terms of charging, the Taycan can charge really fast. It will charge up to 270 kilowatt, uh, which is super fast. It will do that up to about 50%. You can program the charging uh, capacity of the vehicle. I have set it to a maximum of 200 kilowatt because it, it kind of saves the battery capacity over time. And in any case, 200 kilowatt is, is very fast and you will be able to charge the car from 10 to 80% in about 24, 25 minutes. And that is more than adequate for my usage. So two more things about the charging. First of all, when you buy a Porsche, Porsche will send you a charging card. And that is a card which gives you a preferred rate. Uh, in terms of what that costs you is, I'll give you an example. I charge this car uh, 62 kilowatt hours. I use my Porsche card and that consists of uh, two parts. One is the charge per kilowatt hour. And second is the number of minutes you use the charger. And in total, those 62 kilowatt hours I charge cost 34 Swiss francs. And I think that is a pretty fair price and certainly cheaper than some of the other offers out there. The second thing about the charging is I prefer to charge at home because it's more convenient and it is in fact also cheaper. And what you can do is to set the charging timer so that you get a preferred rate from your energy supplier. In uh, terms of my rate, uh, it is cheaper between 11 at night and six in the morning. So I just set the car to only charge between 11 and six, and then I get about, I think, 10% cheaper uh, power for the vehicle. And over time, 10% will actually accumulate to quite a lot of money. So something about the charting system, where you um, program it is you go into the charge, and there you can set up your profile, and the profile will then be, des be decided by you what you want to charge, how long and when and how much. Um, it is a little bit complicated to use it. I don't think Porsche did a good job here. Uh, and sometimes you set it, you program it, and you know, next morning it should be 85% charged and the car should be heated. But I admit sometimes it actually doesn't work even though I have really tried to understand how the menu is set up. But anyway, Porsche recommends that you only charge the car to 85% in everyday usage uh, because it will actually save the battery capacity over time. And for me, I don't need the 100% charge very often. So I just do that 85% uh, as a routine when I charge the car. Uh, but again, I did do that yesterday and this morning the car had charged to 100%, so I must have done something wrong. And I compare this system to some of the other cars I've tested, BMW, Range Rover, or Teslas, and there setting your charting profile is so much more easy and, and logical than what Porsche has done. So I think Porsche could also 
probably come with an update here and uh, make it much easier and more logical for the user to use it. So there really is no reason why Porsche should choose a menu setup that is illogical and very difficult uh, for the user to figure out how it works. And um, if I compare to another car I had a couple of years ago, a uh, Porsche Panamera uh, e-hybrid, that has a perfect system where you can easily program the charging and you can easily use your phone to set uh, the menu and, and the uh, controls. So Porsche has chosen a silly solution for the Taycan. I hope they will update it. The 911, of course, is a true sports car and you would expect a driver focus in the car. But actually Porsche has taken that philosophy and put that into the Taycan as well. When you sit in the Taycan, you have amazing seats. They're really comfortable and still very sporty. When you look out of the car, you see the curves of the vehicle, just like a 911. It's, it gives you a really sporty feel because you also sit rather low in the car. The steering wheel is beautifully made with Alcantara and you've got buttons on the steering wheel to control the various functions and they are haptic, really nice old-fashioned buttons, not touch buttons or something like that, which uh, I personally don't like. So this is, this is a car, of course, a family car with four or five uh, seats in it, but it feels like a true sports car. And it's just amazing how Porsche has built over decades the philosophy and the uh, way they just put all information in front of the driver. You can see everything within a glance. So well done, and this is where the Taycan is special compared to most other electric cars. I recommend you choose the Sport Chrono package because that gives you that Porsche design sub-second clock you have up here. And it also gives you the menu system here to easily switch between modes. So I can go from normal to sport. Another turn of this button will give you sport plus and then individual. And you have a range mode where the car will optimize the consumption so we can go absolute as far as possible. In my first video about the Taycan, I highlighted some of the key things you have to look out for if you consider buying a used Taycan or a used EV car in general. Now let me make a recap on my car. I bought it, it's a three year old car. I paid in total 74,725 Swiss franc as the car stands here. Included in that amount, I had the rims painted black. I had the door trim blackened, it was chrome before. And all in all, that's the price of the car. Running a car like a Taycan is expensive as well, or can be. Road tax, in my case, is about 330 Swiss francs per year. And in terms of insuring the car, you'll pay approximately, for a driver my age and my experience, 2,100 Swiss francs per year for a comprehensive cover. Looking back at the first two and a half months, the car has been flawless so far, so no surprises. But one thing that did surprise me quite a lot was the cost of using the Porsche Connect app. The Porsche Connect app is quite useful because with that you can start the air conditioning or the heating of the car, you can lock the doors and you can open the doors and the windows, etc. But to do that after three years, Porsche will invoice you 249 Swiss francs per year. Yes, the service does give you something more. It gives you a navigation updated system with live data and it gives you a risk radar and it also gives you a travel planner and charging planner which gives you more up-to-date data. But these are all things that personally I do not need. What I would like to do with my app is to control the climate and make sure that the car is locked or that the windows are closed and of course to see what the state of charge is. But you don't get that unless you pay 249 francs at Porsche. Now I checked with the competition and the competition in this case, I looked at Mercedes, BMW, Audi, Tesla, Range Rover, and even Kia. And the sales companies in Switzerland came back to me and said, well, this service with our brands is free of charge at least up to seven or 10 years and possibly thereafter as well. Now, last but not least, I talked about this in the previous video. The Taycan has had some recalls and a lot of technical issues over the last three years. And I just picked up an information, a copy of a letter from the US authorities about Taycan and another recall 
that is concerning the traction battery, so the large battery in the car. And according to that letter, Porsche is obliged to inform customers by May 17, 2024, and this letter was dated March 20. It also is said from Porsche that Taycan owners should not charge the car to more than a maximum of 80% until they get the letter from Porsche. Now, uh, this is uh, the latest technical issue after a number of technical issues on the Porsche Taycan. We'll see how it pans out, but just be aware of that. If you have suggestions to things that I should be looking at, or you have a question, I'll be happy to reply to that. Just put it in the comments below. There'll be another video out in a few weeks, and in that video, I'll talk about the Taycan recital values and the price developments over the last three years, and also electric cars in general, what has happened and what might happen in the coming months. Thank you for watching. Hope you liked the video. Please share it with someone interested in watching it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.